Hi guys, Arctic Penguin here, and I'm bringing you a game of Domination on Karachi. A bit different today, I'm going to be doing a tactical breakdown of my playstyle and what I'm doing in the video. It was requested by a couple of guys on the Sim forums, so it won't be my usual commentary. Uh, right off the bat, Domination, uh, your starting tactic for me. Um, as you've got basically three flags, you've got three choices. You either go for your primary flag, which for us at the minute would be A, and you all charge that as a team, you cap it, or you charge B, try and block the enemy team, or you try and flank C. Now, on Karachi, starting on this side of the map, um, I prefer to take the high ground where I am now and block the enemy team from B until my team has capped A and can move up to it. Now, um, I get capped there a little bit and I'm not quite sure he's from, so I play a bit defensive at this point. Normally, I would have jumped down uh, to B at this point, already trying to cap it, but um, I was unsure of that guy's position. So now I just see that my team's hanging back a bit and I just decide to wait for them to move up. I let that uh, go in silence because I wanted you to be able to hear that I heard that player before he was coming. That's the primary benefit from using headphones. If you're not using headphones, then you're going to limit your play style. Um, if you're using speakers, uh, then all I can say is you need to invest in a pair of headphones. If you want to be hyper competitive and do really well in first person shooters, then um, headphones are the way to go. I mean, I'm sure if you spend a lot of money on um, speakers, then you can probably get the, the same quality, but just being able to hear an opponent around a corner is a huge tactical advantage. Um, so I get my first air support off and I actually fail with it. Uh, this whole first primary kill streak, I believe I only get one kill with the uh, the kill streak. So uh, you get to see me use a lot of weaponry um, tactics. Now I've seen that the, the skull and crossbones has come up there so I know that there's an opponent in there. So I switch to my secondary which I always tend to keep as a launcher and uh, make him come to me as it were. Um, far off my Harriers. Now I see that you have to be aware of your air support tactically. You, I, I've seen that on the mini-map that it's come towards me and I, I thought I might have strafed myself there so I just back off a little bit. The guy gets lost behind the flames there a bit. Next bit of advice is know the weapon that you're using. Um, the weapon I'm here obviously as I'm using is the AK. Now you've got you've got to realise that some weapons have an effective range and for using that weapon in a certain style. Obviously up close, the AK, as far as I'm concerned, has got one of the best hip firing accuracies in the game. Uh, for medium range, you can just spray that sucker all day long because it may look like it's kicking like a mule, but if you start at their, um, their lower chest area, that thing will kick up into their head every day of the week. That's a good tip for you there. Um, whenever capping B, I always tend to grenade, um, if I've got a grenade, that red room because it's just a, a lame place for people to sit and try and stop you from capping B. Uh, as I was saying on the, the weapon, um, at, at range with the AK, you need to learn to tap fire it, I find. Um, so yeah, whichever gun you, you find the balance with, you need to learn the, 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 the way you need to use it for the range that you, you're targeting. You can't just rely on the weapon do it being the same over any range unless you're using the a uh, 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 what is it the acr or whatever it is which is just lame um right okay there you go you've got to pay attention to the the flag caps and um be ready to intercept now on this map um i think that holding b and c is easier than holding b and a simply because the route between c and b is a lot quicker um I'd just like to cover camping as well. The term camp whoring gets used in Modern Warfare 2 way too much. Uh, what I'm doing here isn't camping, it, it's defending. I've got two flags, my team's in the lead, I'm defending. If I was down a flag and losing, and I was doing exactly what I'm doing here, then that would be camping. It's on the losing team to do the work. If the winning team has the lead and the advantage, then they should be the ones to sit back and force the opponents to come to them. That is defending, not camp whoring. Doing the reverse is camp whoring. There's a good one for you as well. Learn to um, disengage reloads. 
sometimes you'll get caught out reloading and you'll get rushed by the target. You need to learn to be able to double tap your weapon change and get up whatever's left in your clip. And the AK's got a big clip on it anyway. Uh, and I've just, I actually unlock extended mags in this video and uh, I've been using that recently and it's just incredible. As you can see throughout this video, I'm just sound whoring everybody in there. I get face planted with a noob tube there. I've got to give him credit for that. Um, that was a good shot. So I, I, I get killed. Um, I haven't worried about my kill streaks, as I said. I think I, I'm pretty sure I only got one with it. Uh, so I just go go back and try and defend B. Uh, that that was looking like I was spraying, but what I was actually doing was hunting for the hit marker. When I, I know there's a target behind a wall, but I'm not quite sure, I will not exactly hold down fire and spray it. I'll try and tap and separate my bullets throughout a section of that wall, hunting for that hit marker. And once I've got that hit marker, then I'll just focus in and then I'll just spray all day. This bit catches me off guard here. I shoot one guy and he falls down, but the, his, his partner crosses him in front of me. And uh, I, that's why I just get a bit confused there and end up getting um, taken from behind. That's in fact the last time I die in this video. Um, what you'll see now is is just a pure on defence of the two flags. As I said, that's not camping as far as I'm concerned. It's on the other team to do the work now. Uh, now I know there's enemies, or there was enemies up on this high ground, and high ground in this game is so important. Um, I used to play uh, Counter-Strike and Counter-Strike Source, and in that game, what would happen is the, the camera that you would be looking through would be actually in about the the uh, stomach area of the, the model of the the, the character that you're playing, um, I, I'm not quite sure what how to describe it, but if you were looking where the through your camera, the, the camera would actually be coming through the hip. So when you come up to an obstacle, your head would be sticking miles above it, but you would think that you're only just behind it. So when you were looking down from a balcony or something, your head would be sticking out miles. Whereas in this, because they've readjusted where the, you actually view from the model itself, and you're actually looking out the head, high ground becomes so much more important because you can use the defense and it's a lot harder to shoot someone from a low position high than it is from a high position low which is exactly what you need and it's more realistic that way so in this game if you've got an option to get to the high ground get to it because you'll be in a stronger um, kill position than the opponents a prime example of that is on rust if you when, when you play rust everyone tries to get up onto the top of that oil rig and then they can just rain uh, fire down on all of that map. Again, here's another prime example of why headphones are a must, or at least paying attention to what's what you're hearing. I I hear that stealth bomber from miles before the the impact, and I just take cover and uh, make sure that I don't give away a cheap cheap kill. This guy does a pretty good job of um, confusing me as to where he is. He uh, he blends into um, those barrels quite effectively, but it's, it's no bother. I'm, I'm there to, to cap C back. Now, here's a good tip. Now, I, what I'm about to do here is actually a good option for you to do. It doesn't actually work out for me here. I know that they've just capped C and that I've just capped it back, and the likelihood of them spawning here is greater because when a team holds a flag, they spawn behind it, um, and they've just capped C. Even though we've stolen it back, I figure that they're going to going to be spawning here so for each map you should be learning the spawns and for the flag spawns so if they've got B learn where they're going to spawn in the middle if they've got C or A etc um, and then you'll find you'll be picking up a lot more kills because if you cap them in the spawn before they have time to get to anywhere defensive then you know it's, it's all good one last thing before the end of the video in domination I never plan to get all three flags. Uh, just get the two and defend. If you go for the third flag, yes, you'll be getting more points. And if you've got a solid team, then you can do the lockout, which can be very amusing. Um, but the problem is you, you play in public games and the, the likelihood is your team's not going to be that good. And by capping that third flag, all you're going to do is cause yourself problems because it creates random spawns and you can't uh, spawn lock your opponents or spawn trap, however you want to call it. Um, so my advice is to cap two and defend those two. So pick the two with the shortest distance between them and force your opponents to do the work. Okay, there we go, victory. 200 versus 111. Prime example of good tactics in play. Uh, I get 33, one and two.
As always, thumb up and comment please. Thanks for watching.